Well, today you're waiting for Connie. Uh, it gives me a great privilege to appreciate your wedding. Connie, you look absolutely fantastic. You look absolutely fantastic. And I know, knowing you, you prepared for this day, probably since the world. Uh, <laughs> that long. But you make every detail perfect. And when I walked in here, I uh, walked before, I thought, what a beautiful place. And it's a fruition of your perfect work and preparation. But more than that, okay, who you are. You are absolutely perfect. You are still the same. Since I've known you since high school, and you are still that smiling, bubbly, full of life, beautiful person. And you look wonderful, elegant, and I'm so glad to be here today. William, you look all right. <laughs> you know, and it's wonderful. And uh, you, know, you are truly uh, that great time that you know you. So you may be a man of few words. I, I, I felt the confidence. I felt the love that you have for Connie. And I know that she can truly find peace and rest in your strength. And, your love. and I pray that you will truly delight in her. And that you realize that God is the one who has brought both of you together. And today I just want to share with you, both of you a couple of words from the word of God. But before I do that, uh, there was a little boy at a wedding one day, and he looked at his mom and said, Mommy, why does the girl wear white? His mom replied, the bride is in white because she's happy. And this is the happiest day of her life. The boy thought about it a little bit and said, but Mommy, why is the boy wearing black? You know, and I want to be to the real life. This is the happiest day. Um, you know, the happiest day is day get better. You know what? The most important that you will both need to know is this is that the secret to marriage is simple. It's a simple love. It's to love one another. Even though it's so simple, it is the most hardest thing you ever have to do in your life, is to love one another. But what does it mean to love? Somebody once said that love is one long sweet dream, but marriage is the long love to the realities of life. Or that love is blind, but marriage is the eye of Another person once said that there are three rings in marriage. There is boring, Right, and there is love. But occasionally, but I want to tell you that's more of other way. It's exhilarating. And I want you to rest in that all the days of your life. And this is why I want to encourage you to the word of God, because it really God tells us what love is all about. In first Corinthians 13, it says love is patient, love is calm. Today there's three things I want us to look at of what love does. First of all, love is not a feeling, but it is the choice that you make. It's not a choice that you make once in a while. It's a choice that you make every day. And this is important because it's so contrary, perhaps, to the way that our society tells us what love is. Often the world defines love as an irresistible force or simply a feeling that you get. And it is a wonderful thing, don't get me wrong, that when you meet someone special and you can't let them go. But when the feeling is gone, so often people say, you ought to keep it up. I've often heard the word, the phrase, I fell out of the mouth. But all that means is that they fell out of the emotion of love. And perhaps they never understood what love is truly really all about. It's not that you can never fall out of love, because love is something that you do. And the reason why we know that to be the case is because you cannot command a feeling, but you can command an action. And the word of God tells us to love. And therefore, if we're commanded to love, then therefore it must mean that we have the ability to do so on our own strength. Even though it seems impossible, it is still our decision that we can choose to love or not to choose, or not love at all. But my hope is that you will always choose to take that step and to love one another. And right now, it's easy to love. You guys are absolutely great. But trust me, there will be days when you don't want to love. There will be days when Connie is going to nag you because she's so perfect and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Her schedule, her organizational schedule, is probably nuts. And you don't want to love her. But love her regardless. And there will be days you don't want to love him. He's going to come home, throw his socks on all over the place. He will go into his cave, sit with the computer, watch ESPN. And you're like, man, why do I want to love this guy? The command is this love. You will not feel it sometimes. Love. You may not want to do it. Love. It's an action that you take. And that's why 1 Corinthians 13 is all about what we do 
and what we don't do. Because you see, love is an action that you are called to partake in. And that's why love is patient, love is kind, and it's not envy, it's not boast, it's not proud. And always remember that. Feelings will come and go, but your commitment will stand. And demonstrate your love for one another. Right? People say often that action without the words without action mean absolutely nothing. That if you love one another, then demonstrate the way that you live with one another. At the same time, the second thing is this that not only is it that we do, but at all the same time, it is not self speaking. So in other words, we can always do something for that person, but a lot of times we do something for that person because we want something back. No, when you do something for that person, it's not because you want something back, but it's simply because you want to give. You see, love is never self seeking and the reason why you're able to do that is because you don't need your spouse's love. You already have that perfect love. And what do I mean by that? You have the perfect love of Christ. That there is no greater love in this world than the love that Christ has for you. That you are his bride and he is your bridegroom. And when you rest in that love and realize that I am so loved, that you have the ability and the strength to love your partner. To love your husband, to love your wife. And knowing that you can, knowing that perfect love enables you to love one another. And that's why you are called to share that love, not for your own benefit, but for the benefit of your partner. For many, marriage has become a codependent relationship where a person's happiness resides in his or her spouse. And if they're not getting their happiness in his or her spouse, and they're not getting what they want, they're often miserable. And they start seeking their own satisfaction. They want they're seeking their own desires. And when their desires are not met, they want to give up. But you don't have to be that. Rest in the love that Christ has for you. Know that love more and more so that you have the energy and the strength to give that love out. Because you see, your desire, your purpose should be this. To make your spouse, to be all that they can be. That is the purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage is not what can I get out of marriage, but what can I give to my spouse so that you will be able to make that person all that God has intended that person to be. For God has brought you together for the, for the simple purpose so that the glory of God can come out of your spouse. And that's why God has brought you Connie. That's why Connie, God has brought you woman. Because he can do it better than anyone else, and she can do it better than anyone else. Make your spouse to be the best that they can be Never say, not what I want, but how can I make that person better? And when it's not self-seeking, it's going to be costly. That's why it says in the word of God, wives, submit to your husbands. Why is that? Because what really means more than anything else is your respect. God made us men that way as little insecure creatures that we are. We need our wives' respect. And that's why it says submit. And it will be hard. What about me and my rights? And you do it because you love. It's not about me. It's about him. Same time, one, the Bible tells you as husband, love your husbands. You're like, well, that's obvious. But you see the reason why the she needs that more than anything else. What a woman needs more than anything else in the world is not money, it's not love, it's not glory. Yeah, it's nice. But she wants your love. And you know what? It's going to love her as Christ loved the church. And you know how we know Christ loved the church? He died for us. He died for us. Die daily for God. It's not about you. It's about her. And that's the beauty of becoming one flesh. That you will extinguish yourselves and become together as one. That no longer about me, but the part of my heart. And that's why it's not, it does not envy. It is not boast. It is not proud. It is not me. It is not self It is not use of record. It keeps no record of the It refuses to do these things. It is about my heart. It's about learning the con. And finally, we realize that love is a commitment. In other words, love is not a matter of convenience. It's a matter of commitment. The world says that you got to be compatible in order for a marriage to work. But what I see what you need is commitment. And today, this word commitment is so diluted in our society today. The idea of commitment seems to be foregone. People are no longer loyal to their jobs. People are no longer loyal to their homes. They were just walking away. And I understand it's hard. But you see, it's about commitment. It's about you making this promise before God and these people. 
And you know what? That commitment will get you through. Because you see, if you notice, there's a progression. It says love. Always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. In other words, love bears all things. Do you see, there were times where it was so hard that you would want to up, give up, but the Bible said love bears it. And when you cannot bear it anymore, it says love believes all things. You believe in your partner. That my partner is, this person is the right one. This person can get through this. You believe in your partner. But sometimes, your partner will let you leave. And so it'd be hard for you to believe in your partner. 